So I clicked it, just click this Christian video and some commercial comes on. And this couple's sitting there and they do marriage counseling. They have a marriage course and blah, blah, blah. And you don't know, there's an enemy in the world and they're, it's trying to destroy your relationship. And then he goes on to say like, oh, you know, forgiveness is giving up the right to hurt the person that hurt you. And his wife's sitting there going, that's right, honey. That's just right. That's just right, honey. And ladies, women have a problem holding on to grudges. We're record keepers. I'm a record keeper. What? If only I had been a record keeper, a lot of the things I went through and my kids went through would not have happened. If only I wouldn't have kept wiping the slate clean in the name of Jesus. Maybe a lot of stuff wouldn't have happened to me. Um, what is this propaganda or bull crap? Men are like this. Women are like that. Women are record keepers. Women are the gatekeepers of their vaginas and you'll keep their, they'll keep their legs locked and they'll, they'll have hold grudges against you and not have sex with you. And then the man is there. They're just cheaters. They just go out and do, is that what we are as men and women? I don't, I'm disgusted by this. And then there's this invisible enemy. He's out to destroy your family. He's out to destroy your relationship. He's lurking about. Why don't you just pay attention to one another and act like adults? What is this? Women are record keepers. Oh, they sure are, honey. Oh, they just... Gag me with a stack of Bibles. Gag me. I had a pastor once stand in the pulpit and explain that women... What does that verse mean? Hold on a second. I'm losing my train of thought. It's been so long now, I don't remember. But it was something about the woman... Um, still desiring her husband after such and such. I don't freaking know. The childbirth, the pain in the childbirth, but she'll still desire her husband after that. And I said to my pet, well, he's like, everybody know what that means? I think we were in Bible study before church. And I said, boy, I guess it means you still want to make love to your husband, even though the pain of childbirth was so severe. And he was like, no, it means your desire shall be over for your husband. It will be for you to continue to control your husband. Your desire. You desire to control your husband. All women want to control their husbands. And when they succeed at it, they have no respect for them. And then the marriage is destroyed. I was like, what? I've never one time wanted to control my husband. I wanted my husband to control himself. Well, you want him to do what you want him to do. Well, I want him to behave like an adult. If that's control, I'm sorry. It's all, I feel like these teachings that the church comes bringing at us is so insulting to our genders, our humanity, or whatever level of maturity we have in whatever areas of our emotional self. It's insulting. It's like we we can't possibly know what's right unless we run to this building three or four times a week to sit under and listen to what? Other fla- fallen human beings tell us what? And then you find out they've been having an affair with the church secretary. And then you... Can we just stop seeking outside of ourselves so freaking much? Um, groups of people that we're not close to. I'm not saying we should never counsel one another. That's what friends, good family members are for. Because they know us. They're not some random people that you know. Oh, yeah, I love these people at church. Do you know if you were to get spy cameras in their homes, you would be, you'd shit your draws. These people are not necessarily what you think they are. I have found this out time and time again, time and time again, over and over and over and over and over again. Going, oh my God, I can't believe what these people do behind closed doors or when they leave or what their marriages are like or how they treat their kids or how their kids treat them or just like, what is going on in this world? We need fewer relationships that we call friends. And we need to counsel with one another in the, in the closer and stop with this 
giant group, mega churches. What do you think's going on there? Nobody really knows what's happening. It's a giant concert every weekend. I remember mom saying, when I was, she was raising me, the, the mom that raised me. Well, if you don't like mega churches, you're not going to like it. We, good luck in heaven. You're not going to like heaven. Like, what is it going to be like a mega church service the entire time? She's like, yeah. Where did she get these ideas that heaven was just like a Joel Osteen church service? We're just going to praise God forever and ever and ever. I remember telling my kids that one. We're just going to praise God forever. And they're like, well, that sounds kind of paid. My daughter paid. She was like, I don't mean to be offensive, but that sounds kind of boring, actually. And I, it actually sat in my mind for a long time. I thought, yeah, that does sound like a kid old. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, God bless her heart. And uh, as she continues to fight baby fever, <laughs> she's got it. She's got it. She's 27 years old. Uh, a couple of months ago, she well, a month or so ago, she held her second baby niece in her arms. And uh, yeah, it's like, oh, it's on, it's on, it's on. And she's like, mom, mom, mom. I'm like, no, girl, come on, man. You just started pole dancing. You can get strong, get strong, get your hormones straight, get, get stronger. Get your head clearer. Your partner just sprained his ankle. Let him heal up, please. <laughs> move to that area you want to move to that's child-friendly, that's family-friendly. Get situated, then go for it, if that's what you want to do. You know what I mean? And she's like, you're right, you're right. I know I'm right. She's like, oh, baby fever. I know, girl. Me and Lenny got it when we got together. <gasps> Because we were so in love. I mean, in, it was hardcore. It was just the intense feelings. And we were just like, no, nah, we were no, 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 no. Because he was 41 and I was 35. We're like, I had three kids, two baby daddies. Three baby daddies is too many. My birth mom said that's why she sold me. But anyway, nobody would want her. I'm like, but we just were like, no, we're done. We're done. And then, see, we wound up with, with Dunia for almost four years. So that was... Um, my granddaughter was very close to us, stayed with us, um, while her mom worked different shifts and things like that. And the baby slept and had a little room at our house and everything it was great. So he had that experience and, um, it satisfied his heart of that urge. <laughs> but we're for, whoa, wait, 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 really wanted to have that baby. Be careful when you got baby fever. Now you got to think it's, it's, it is a physiological urge that doesn't necessarily make uh, good common sense. So think before you bring another human being into this realm. Because you'll be sorry. Because <laughs> you're going to tell them you're sorry. So I'm sorry, bro, you're here. I'm sorry. It's terrible here. I know I'm sorry, but I love you. <laughs> See you later, YouTube.